Hi there. It's uh, late Saturday, June the 1st, and um, I'm looking at the turkey here again. Um, I find this an important story because it's something that has gone from a, a, a very small, sort of peaceful, almost, um, you know, uh, completely ignored protest to now potentially um, government shaking type protest. Turkey's a very interesting country. Um, we've had a lot of Turkish people respond. Some of them, well, well, all of them coming from different sort of um, political backgrounds and um, their own sort of mindset. Turkey is more or less the bridge for the Western world into the Middle East, right? I mean, literally, if you talk about Istanbul uh, being on the Bos the Bosphorus, the famous crossing over the sort of the entranceway to the Black Sea. Um, historically, one of the most important cities that has ever existed, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Um, so it's it's a very very important country. It's an extremely important country um, throughout history, um, strategically, even in the 1962 uh, Cuban Missile Crisis, Turkey played a big part uh, because the, the Americans had missiles set up there uh, in one of their bases. Um, but I don't want to digress on that. But what's happening there now could potentially lead to a civil war, which is very, very, well, it would be a big deal. And what we have essentially is we have the old versus the new or you can say the western world versus the islamic world kind of coming together and ba and duking it out um one of the videos i put up had some what appeared to be knife fights on the street and what turkish people were putting in was that it was erdogan uh the leader of turkey supporters of erdogan and his party I think it's the ADK, who um, are considered moderate Islamicists. All right? Now, I know Turkish people come on here and school me on this, and God knows they would know a lot more than me about this, but I've always followed Turkey with interest because of its strategic and, and important um, ramifications to um, the Western world and also the Middle East. So it's a, it really is a bridge country so it's very very important uh, strategically um, so these protests which kind of started out as more or less a tempest in a teapot I mean it was over a park of course it's always so much more to it than just, just that but uh, the fact that the Turkish um, government was hell bent on building a shopping mall but it now it seems like of course most of the people that are protesting are um, more secular, right? They are the westernized Turks. A lot of young, <laughs> I don't want to use the term the young Turks because then I'll think of Cenk Uygur, but you know what I mean? Um, they're young, they're westernized. They've experienced the culture, the alcohol, the uh, sexual liberation and stuff like that of the western world. And therefore, you have a clash of cultures where you have the older, stricter Islamic code that um, wants to reinforce itself in Turkey, and then you have the liberal, sort of westernized. And there's bad on both sides, I mean, really. I mean, I've been the first one to criticize the West for... I mean, if you check out our channel, there isn't enough... I mean, there, there's there's just a, a plethora, literal plethora of, of criticism on Western culture, Western governments, Western sort of uh, global uh, policy. So I do not mean to, I'm not here to side with the West or even side with the protesters, but at the same time, um, the government of Turkey responded very belligerently to the protest and, and really fanned the flame. So... I'm going to play this uh, latest uh, uh, clip here from the BBC and uh, I'll take it from there.
Nearly a thousand people have been detained following a second day of violent protests in Turkey. Police and demonstrators fought running battles in the centre of Istanbul and in the capital, Ankara. The demonstrations began in response to plans to redevelop a park in Istanbul's historic Taksim Square. But they turned into a wider expression of anger at the government. From Istanbul, James Reynolds reports. <laughs> For a second day, the city which bridges two continents came apart. Here, protesters in Istanbul fight a battle with the police. The demonstrations have also spread to the capital, Ankara. Their hatred for this country's powers is clear. The protests began in Taksim Square, in the centre of Istanbul. The police used tear gas and water cannon to get rid of environmental campaigners. But the police tactics provoked thousands to come out onto the streets. This is a revolt of Turkey's liberals. They believe that the country's government, which is rooted in Islam, is out to take away their freedoms. The Prime Minister, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, has struggled to respond. These are the most dramatic protests he's faced in a decade in power. He's admitted that the police have used excessive force. Wherever you go around the world, governments take precautions against these kinds of movements. That's what we're doing here. The misuse of tear gas by our security forces has been investigated by our ministry. I don't deny the abuse. In the evening, demonstrators took over the center of town. Tonight here in Tatsum Square, there is a sense of victory among protesters. The police have been forced to withdraw and the demonstrations here over the last 24 hours have exposed serious divisions in Turkish society. Turkey is a country with tremendous ambition. It wants to join the European Union and host the Olympic Games. But tonight, its government has a more immediate goal, restoring peace to its most famous city. James Reynolds, BBC News, Istanbul. And we can cross live now to Taxon Square. We've got a live shot there that shows the demonstrators in the square. As you can see, it shows little sign of letting up and it looks like the protesters are certainly there for the evening. Well, certainly interesting. Um, I think um, I think what uh, there's a lot of different scenarios that can, could play out in this uh, in this situation. One thing most of us were old enough can remember is the Tiananmen Square um, massacre that happened in China when the the youth of China rose up and said we've had enough of this communist dictatorship and the communist dictatorship uh basically said we're going to we're going to fuck you up <laughs> and they did and they killed uh, several thousand it's unconfirmed how many died tens of thousands we don't know but many people died they just stomped on it with a giant foot you know right out of like monty python or something um so it's unlikely that Erdogan can use the same type of tactic, although, you know, judging by how he has reacted so far, or at least how the police have reacted so far, it's, it's been, I mean, I think, I think in many ways, I mean, I said it the other night when the, um, the Occupy Wall Street went from something that practically nobody knew was even happening to international news it was like wildfire and it was the particular 
uh, video which showed the police uh, using a fence, uh, a sort of makeshift fence to uh, cordon off a group of women and pepper and some uh, police sergeant, uh, I believe it was, or lieutenant, came and sprayed, pepper sprayed them all in the face and, and they were screaming in agony and it went viral. And then all of a sudden, instead of having just a few hundred people in, in uh, you know, Zuccotti or whatever, the uh, park there in New York, you had tens of thousands, and then you had hundreds of thousands, and then you had even millions across the world starting to protest. I mean, there was, I, I partaked in a protest here in Montreal, in which I would, end, I would estimate it was like 40,000 people. Uh, for the Occupy Wall Street. So there was huge, um, and, you know, huge protest, and often it's the government um, response. And maybe it's not always fair to blame the government because the police obviously are um, part of, you know, or at least share part of the blame, um, depending on what, they're told right from the top um but here you have clearly police that acted quite violently um i showed the video the first one that i put up on this was the fellow that i, I still think he's died i don't know i haven't got any confirmation of that but as far as i know several people have died in these protests and um you know that that was the powder kick it, it it's one of those things that just all of a sudden a lot of people are upset and then they see that if they're in Turkey and they're in Istanbul or Ankara and it just it's it's it lights a fuse right so um and then of course you're going to have the people uh, chiming in that this is a plot um by western bankers to create all this disruption i don't know i mean it's so complex i mean a lot of people that are there have their reasons for doing it and of course, one thing I would encourage is all the Turkish people to to um, you know put their comments and and say what it is that they're upset about, because obviously we're not going to know here, and uh, I'm in Canada, you know, like we've got enough problems here, right? I try to know, I try to uh, keep on top of or abreast of world topics as they're they're transpiring because I'm very interested in that. I've studied history. I'm very I'm very into world affairs. So and I think they're we're all in this globalization. I mean, let's not kid ourselves, right? The same uh m you know, huge franchises are in Istanbul that are in places like Montreal or New York or Tokyo, right? You're going to have your McDonald's and your fucking burger thing and all that crap right so we're all suffering from that crap and i sympathize with the um muslim um population of of uh, turkey that would be upset about a lot of the things that have been happening because look i mean our, the culture the, the the western culture it's not a good culture right it's not good values. It's it's not good people. I mean, look at look at the music. Look at the the movies. Look at the violence, the sex, the crap. I mean, it's you know, it, it's not great stuff that we're exporting to the world. I like to say we are. You know, I think democracy is important. I I really believe in that. Right. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't believe in that. But um, you know. Our, our our hamburgers and shit like you know our cl our crap our culture our music or videos all that crap these people would be way better off without it right and they know it right of course now if you're gonna have the youth that are are growing up um, getting a westernized education you know um, in places like Istanbul and craving that sort of um, liberty that they perceive exists in our world, but it doesn't really exist, right? I mean, we're we're run by the banks, right? We're uh, censored, equally censored, and equally repressed, but on different levels, right? We're often tricked here in the West into thinking that somehow 
we've got, you know, we've got all the answers and we've got it made and we figured it out, but most people here that are awake realize real quickly that the elite at the top here are, are, are sociopathic, psychopathic, fucking greedy monsters. And their main objective is to depopulate the planet. Um, whether they are creating these um, types of... I, I, I think it's too hard to create these type of things. I think you can, right? If it's, it's, it's possible. There's no doubt about it. But I think also just this is the spirit of humanity to rise up and, and, and to, you know, protest when you feel like you're being oppressed. And, of course, when you've got huge groups, thousands and thousands of people converging, you feel the power, right? The power of the mob. Anybody who's been... I've been in so many mobs, I can't even count. I'm from Montreal. We, we, you know, <laughs> we riot for hockey, right? So uh, we know... We wrote the book on rioting here, so we know about getting together and having huge mobs and, you know, protesting this, protesting that. Um, so... You know, people coming together is going to give you a lot of energy and it's going to create a lot of of power amongst the people, obviously, right? Whether that's a good thing or not, who knows, right? I mean, like, we like to think that Turkey, from my point of view, would be democratic, right? And that the people would have the choice and the majority would be able to choose. So if the majority chose to go Islamic, then so be it, right? If you don't like it, then maybe you can move somewhere else. I don't know, right? But, um, you know, the, that's the way I see it, is that um, we have to have the power to exercise our democratic rights. And hopefully in Turkey right now, this will not bring about a civil war and that cooler heads will prevail and, and that the the, uh, the Prime Minister will decide to not build the park. He, he will make a, a, a concession, right? Let's make a concession. Let's say, I'm not going to build that park. We'll preserve the trees. We'll give them something. And maybe we'll um, alter the alcohol bill or whatever they were passing that pissed off a lot of people. Um you know, slightly, or whatever, give them something, right, because if you don't, then you might, you might trigger something worse, so I, I really hope for these people that they don't descend into a, a, a civil war, unless it's absolutely necessary, right, because we're getting to the point here, let's be honest, we're getting to the point here where, where uh, we might descend into the same thing very quickly, there's been a, a huge amount of talk about the United States, whether the United States could, you know, devolve into a civil war. And it's very, very possible. Absolutely. And you'd be kidding yourself if you, did, if you thought otherwise, right? Um, so, and war is just an awful thing. Nobody wants war, but then war brings about change, so sometimes war is necessary. Let's hope that war isn't necessary in this case. And uh, I would really like um, the people from Turkey who listen to this and understand the language that I'm speaking um, to be, you know, kind to your, your fellow countrymen and kind to the people here and not resort to fuck you all, you fucking goddamn fucking this and fucking that. Because, look, we're, in the, we're all in this shit staying together. We're, we've all got the same crap going through our cities, right? You've got the same cars and the same restaurant, a little bit different, a little bit change, you know. But it's all the same, basically, the same banks, you know. We're all in the same shithole together. So we got to kind of realize it and, and try to swing this power back to the people. Take it away from the fucking banksters and the billionaires and the, and the horrible corporations that are, are polluting our minds, our bodies, our culture, and everything else... And bring it back to the people, and and just try to work together throughout the world to promote this sort of you know let's let's clean up this world ourselves let's let's try to work together and let's stay away from violence and 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 you know war and whatever we can we can avoid. Anyways, thank you for listening. Leave your comments below and subscribe. Thank you.